Okay, so the engine is now basically dismantled and we've got all our lovely uh, cases of which you can see there are many. But although the engine is now dismantled, basically we've still got to take all the various bits off the, the, the casings. So all the bearings out, the oil seals, take out the internals of the gearbox covers and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take you through some of the removal uh, process for some of the casings. But I'm not going to do every single one because the process is much the same for removing bearings and oil seals. For removing bearings you heat the case up, make sure that any circlips holding the bearing in have been removed and then tap the bearing through using a suitable sized drift which in our case is normally a socket or something like that. Okay, but I'll, I'll take you through um, some of, of the uh, other process and also obviously things like the inner, inner uh, gearbox uh, cover and the outer gearbox cover, which are a bit different, we'll go through that. Then on a separate video, then we're going to start uh, taking the cylinder, the cylinder head apart and the, uh, and the rocker boxes, which are, which are in these bags at the moment. Okay. Um, we need to completely strip all the uh, cases because they're going to be off, uh, going to be vapor blasted, which is uh, using a sort of a fine, normally like a glass bead uh, in water. But that those beads get absolutely everywhere. It's like they're like grains of sand. So you've got to completely strip the cases if you want to do that, which in our case we do. And then also some of the cases have got to go off to be mended. Some have got to go off to be polished which isn't quite such a, a bad process, but everything needs to be stripped. So we're going to go through some of the stripping down of, of the cases, which is a bit repetitive. And then we'll come back on another video and we'll go through, we'll completely strip down the rocker boxes, the cylinder head, the cylinders. We'll go through, then we'll start going through cleaning up and preparing the crankshaft and so on. But for now, we're looking at just stripping down some of the cases. Right, I'm just going to carry on taking the various last bits out of the crank cases. So the next job is I'm going to remove this oil seal carrier, which will then give us access to the large bearing on the back of the gearbox for the gearbox main shaft, and we're going to knock that out, and then we're going to knock this bearing out, which is the bearing for the back of the lay shaft. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these three screws to take the oil seal carrier off. Right, so I've removed the oil seal carrier which has exposed the bearing. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to heat up the casing quite a lot, quite high. Uh, and get it nice and hot and then I'll turn this over and I've got a socket and what I'll do is that socket, it just fits on and sits on the bearing on the inner race and I can drive it through, drive it out from the inside. And then there's this lay shaft bearing, this small needle roller bearing here. Have we got that? I think so. Hang on a minute. Might be clearer. This needle roller bearing here, that... Uh, uh, yeah, I think you can see it, that we're going to drive out. That's the back of it. That's the back of it here. So we're going to drive this one through from this side uh, using a, a socket of the right diameter. Right, I've heated the uh, case up quite a bit. I'm going to get my socket. I've mounted the uh, casing on wood blocks. The extractor fan is going going 10 to the dozen, which is what the noise is, because obviously heating up crank cases in the basement, the smell does drift up through the house, and I'm not Mr. Popular. There, straight out. Okay, so that's the uh, main gearbox bearing on the main shaft. And now I'll try drifting out the uh, bearing the lay shaft, the small lay shaft bearing, the needle roller bearing. Again, with a socket, it's just the right size, hopefully. 
there and the needle roller bearings out as well so they're out last two things I've got to do which I'll not do on camera to remove the drain plug and remove the oil pressure uh, switch I've already taken the uh, uh, plunger uh, the, the plunger bolt out oh I'll also remove these two uh, bolts um, and all they are is they're just to cover drillings uh, the drillings that go through for the oil ways to the main bearings and they just simply block the drillings off where they were made in manufacture but I'll take those off uh, take the oil seals out any last o-rings and that because you I'm going to take it down to be blasted at, and basically you want it completely clear for blasting you don't want anything left in I'll take the shells out it's not ready for blasting yet but I'll show you when it is ready for blasting but I've done that and then I shall do the same with the timing case to remove all the final bearings and the drive side case right I'm just uh, removing the oil pressure switch I just mentioned that because for some reason it seems to be a Whitworth spanner And I've marked the, uh, I've marked the uh, bearing ring as to which side faces outwards. Normally you fit it with a, uh, any, any lettering facing outwards, which this indeed already is. So that's the way it will go back in if we reuse it. Okay, so turning to the uh, drive side casing. If you remember, I needed to get this last bolt out up here. Um, but I couldn't because the uh, taco drive was in the way. And I couldn't get the taco drive off because it was C solid. So now I've got it on the bench because that, that bolt won't come out past the taco drive. I, should. Uh, I was able, anyway, when I got it on the bench, I was able to uh, dismantle it, but it was absolutely C solid. So I've already taken it off and I just sort of like mocked it back up. If I don't look at even just absolutely and utterly I don't know if you can how well you can see that but completely C solid but anyway things to note are there, there are two caps that go one on the bottom here I'll take that out and you can see it one on the bottom one there now the one on the side is normal uh, right hand thread I've probably gotten around the wrong way I have so that one on the side is normal right hand thread. The one on the bottom, although it's not marked as such, is left hand thread. So what you need to do to get this off is you need to take this cap off, normal right hand thread, then take this cap off. I have to think about it twice because it's so unnatural to do it. Left hand thread that cap. Then you can pull uh, this uh, sort of drive out here then you can pull the drive out that goes into the camshaft at least it would if I hadn't shoved it in there now it won't come out again there we go that drive out and then that gives us access to the mounting bolt oh this is the drive by the way to the uh, comes from the camshaft and as you can see that's completely snapped off which I'm not surprised about because this ab this whole unit is completely seized solid anyway with those two uh, spindles drive shafts removed then you can get a 7 16 spanner in or socket in and again it's a left hand thread so again think about it twice turn it clockwise to undo it obviously this is already loose because I've just mocked it back on again and that brings the drive unit back off and then we can take our engine bolt out right so I've given the bearing uh, 
or heating the casing around the bearing as much as I can. Getting ready to drive the uh, main bearing out. Again, it's worth noting that the bearing has been correctly fitted with the lettering facing outwards. It's just uh, a standard fitting unless, for whatever reason, the bearing or whatever the manufacturers tell you to do it the other way around. Generally fit bearings facing outwards, uh, with the lettering facing outwards. Okay, so hopefully that's hot enough. I've removed the two uh, big circlips that hold it in either side. And then, fortuitously, I've got my drift, which is a perfect fit, just fits inside and sits on the outer race of the bearing. If you're going to drive a bearing out, you always want to try and drift it out on the outer race. You can drift it out on the inner race, but obviously you risk damaging it because you're pushing on the ball bearings. And as it may well be that we reuse this race again, I don't want to damage it. So, but luckily got that, my mega socket is the perfect size, so let's hope this will drive out without too much there it goes and there's the bearing out on the bench and uh, that's great obviously it's a bit hot that's why I'm treating it a bit gently great so nearly done on the cases just two uh, last things so first of all I've got to remove this which is the uh, anti wet something valve which notoriously doesn't work that well Right, that's the uh, anti-drain valve uh, removed. The idea is that there's this uh, ball bearing which is held in place with this spring and that uh, blocks off the oil flow and then when the pump's working it pushes the uh, bear ball bearing open and then when the engine stops it closes again. That's the theory. The practice is somewhat different as in it doesn't work right and that's the oil pressure release valve removed from the back of the case and basically again it's a bit like the anti-drain valve there's a big spring in there and if the oil pressure is too high it simply opens the valve and allows the oil to bypass the main bearings etc so normally it's closed and all the oil pressure goes to the main bearings, but at start of that can be very high with thick oil. So this is when that had opened uh, just to avoid excess pressure.